because it's such a big business. This has become, this has become a second church and it has its scriptures and you can't veer away from orthodoxy. And if you do, the congregants set on you. The, that, that theme playing out, I think, is one of the, the meta themes of sports over the last 30 or 40 years, is we winnowed it down to right thinking and wrong thinking in, in, a, in a milieu where it's actually built to do the exact opposite thing. We're just constantly redefining what physical greatness means and how you might achieve it. Uh, but that, in, in the midst of that ridiculousness, uh, I see myself as a person, I'm an apostate. Like, I don't believe in that. I think most of this is kind of goofy, and that's what makes it fun. You know, Steph Curry walks off with a sprained ankle, and really America loses its mind collectively. They've got other problems. <laughs> they got other quite bigger problems. But I, you know, and I respect the fact that people find that as that's a release from their daily lives. Sports is, is the last vestige of the monoculture. That's the one thing that if you sit down at a bar, you're expected to know a little bit about, and you can have a conversant little dialogue with the guy sitting beside you. How about those Leafs? You know, nobody would say, how about that TSO? Or, you know, how about that Brazilian situation? You, wish, you wouldn't expect that people would know. Uh, so for that reason, it's always easy to find the subjects. Steve Simmons from the Toronto Sun, he was the guy that told me, uh, never be afraid to be big, never be afraid to be wrong. Uh, I think we are, as we all become, you know, when you talk about branding, we're all brands now, not necessarily in media, just everywhere. We're all trying to put forth a face uh, that we think is going to push us forward in life. And people don't want to be wrong. They don't want to be seen to be going against the common train of thought. I think you should, if you want to succeed, and I would imagine it's not just the media, you have to buck against that. It's very hard. Um, I don't find it hard. It just comes to me naturally. Maybe that's why I ended up here. Especially in sports where there are, you are surrounded by people who know, when I'm talking about the readership, who know as much or more, like thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It's unlike any other job where if I'm an insurance adjuster, I don't get razzed outside work by guys going up, your insurance adjusting is no good. You know, you get razzed by hundreds and thousands of people who really do know as much as you do. And if you're afraid, if you're afraid, then what you, you end up getting beaten down to the point where you're just parroting the same old concepts. And of course, hundreds of people are writing or broadcasting or blogging those same ideas. It's impossible to stand out. That's not why they pay me. They pay me to stand out. I cannot think of a single instance in which a week into the event, you're still talking about it. The sports overwhelm it. Always. Sochi. God. Like, I was in Sochi. And when you got there, really, the buildings, it was a Potemkin village. The buildings were falling apart. There were so many great stories. I was writing them. It came out the first two weeks. of just It was just a farce. Like, it was farcical. It was so great. And then as soon as they said, it's not going to work, and Vladimir Putin, and how can we support this in the Ukraine? And then, and then day one, Team Canada practiced. Nobody cared. Nobody cared anymore. And then we picked it up at the end of the Olympics, but that just the sports itself overwhelms it. People don't want to hear about it anymore. And the Olympics and you know, the IOC, FIFA, those organizations are smart enough to realize as long as you can mitigate that information, as long as it doesn't overwhelm you in the, in the lead up, and the smartest thing to do is say nothing.